Okay, in this lecture, we are going to start covering uh, some more uh, details on the tools such as Gantt charts. And uh, if we look at the learning objectives here, uh, I will cover a little bit on the history of the Gantt chart, how you represent it, alternative representations, how we can use the Gantt chart for monitoring. And uh, we'll do a little bit of an exercise, and then uh, I'll demo a spreadsheet which we can. Uh, used to, to be able to uh, do simple Gantt charts. Now when you go into the history, uh, although it is called a Gantt chart, it was actually there is evidence that uh, this form of a chart was originally used by a Polish engineer and uh, he was actually in steel, in the steel works and he, the, he used what you see here, it is a, it is called a Adamniki harmoniograph. So it is almost like a musical score which uh, the, the difference here is you can see the bars are coming down vertically as opposed to what Gantt designed uh, later on. So it was only around 1910 that uh, Henry Gantt actually came out with this uh, with what we use today as called the Gantt or the bar chart and uh, obviously the what came out of uh, Eastern Europe was not in English so the English speaking world did not take up to it and what uh, Gantt came up was in English and so we associate this chart with the Gantt chart and uh, interestingly you will find that Gantt was associated with Frederick Taylor. So he had worked for some time with Frederick Taylor, uh, went into this principles of scientific management and uh, so at that stage it was kind of a, an era when uh, factories and uh, production places were looking at scientific ways of doing uh, management and Gantt was one of these people who came out with what we know as the Gantt chart. Now incidentally uh, it is it was very popular for uh, production purposes in World War I. It was being used for planning the Hoover Dam, the interstate highways in the US. It uh, got really popular because of its simplicity. Now there is also evidence that the Germans used a similar chart. So what you see here on the right is a chart that is used for bridge construction in Germany. So while the world knows it as a Gantt chart, there is evidence that there were, this is a, a common sense based approach which was used by quite a few engineering managers in the past. And uh, I recommend you read uh, the reference given below, it gives you a history of, uh, of the Gantt chart, uh, refers into more detail on what is covered on this slide and it also gives you access to the original books by Gantt on how he developed the chart and you know what its purposes were. And uh, these are now uh, out of copyright, so it is public domain and you can actually see how some of the management thinkers at that stage were trying to optimize production. Now when we actually get into the representation of the Gantt chart, you are familiar with this in some form or the other, does not need a lot of explanation, but just look at the simplicity, okay. We had activities which are listed here, okay, on the left of the chart there is activities and on the top it is just time. Now you remember last class what was our objective? Bridge. <coughs> was it the, what was the objective of the earlier lecture? Uh, work, work, breakdown work breakdown structure. What did the work breakdown structure do? So basically it recognizes, you recognize all the activities that right. are involved in right. the So the work, by, by using the work breakdown structure we want to be able to identify the activities. And once we identify these activities, we can actually put it, we are supposed to be able to list it down here. So we assume that some kind of activity identification exercise has taken place before the bar chart is made to list the activities. On the time axis, here we have days and we have not actually covered the topic of how do we estimate duration of an activity. So that will come in the next lecture. But this is also important. So we just need, we need two inputs, right? What are the inputs we need to draw a bar chart? The activities and, time. Activities start. and start. time, start time and duration. So we have the activities which we got from work breakdown structure or some other means. We need to know when the activity is going to start and we need to know the duration of the activity. So with that you can actually draw this, you can easily see that, right? Now obviously just drawing me uh, bars on a graph is one thing, but making it meaningful in the context of the project you are trying to do is really the key question here. 
and as we get into the exercises later you will find that when you have when you have to draw when you have to put the bar into where are you going to actually place the bar that is going to be some of the key questions now if we look at what are the aspects that the bar chart shows you you can see what you can see one is certainly the, what the various activities are when an activity begins and ends you know how long each activity is scheduled to last so these we have discussed before so I can I can get more information I can go to a particular day say like day 12 and see what are the activities that are to be performed on that day okay so now I am not going from an activity side I am going on a day side and finding what should be the activities that are performed I can find what activity overlaps with what and and the last part I can find when you know how what is the duration of the project so this project takes 25 days what is the actual duration of the whole project so so this is all basic planning information and you can see that most of these are relate are obviously related to time okay any questions now there are different forms of a bar chart so this is uh, this is uh, a sample of a milestone chart so here you find there are no bars actually but you have the same concept you have time on the x axis you have activities and you are just taking you are just placing uh, points on when an activity should be completed or how much can an, uh, how much can activity can be what is the late the most you can extend an activity so this is kind of a milestone chart which is very popular typically when we go back to the levels of scheduling if you take the highest level of scheduling it's more of a milestone chart now another form of the bar chart it need not be continuous you can see here that we have continuous a and b now i have in the in the second graph here in the second bar chart here what have what what is represented discontinuous act so what is constant in both duration total time the total, total time would you call that duration the total time the total working on the the total working time is the same so in a it's three days okay and you can see that here one two three days so the effort put for this uh, activity a is the same the effort put for activity here is for b is five days and here we have split it up so there is no reason a bar chart has to be continuous as it's shown here we can also split up the uh, the effort in a in a duration in in the for the activity because that's what often happens so you know for example a could be an active could be done by a person who is not available on day 3 4 and 5 which means you need the flexibility to represent it in a, a non continuous form okay so do keep this also in mind that you will be able, you, your bar chart does not need to have a continuous representation now another unique uh, aspect or a what is a very convenient aspect of a bar chart is the fact that you can use it for progress monitor so here you can see that uh, you have we have the regular bar chart which is continuous and uh, and this is the plan and as progress is made you can start shading the bar and show you know where am i so here i mean i might be on a particular time period and how much of progress has been made okay so this is either you can shade in the bar or you can show a parallel bar to it and see how much of it is completed now uh, in in some of these cases it becomes tricky to say what do we mean by progress okay so this we will we will take up this question later as to how do we define progress and what do we mean by progress we will take this up to some extent in this class but certainly a lot more when we take up project monitoring module of this course so here is another way in which uh, monitoring is done where uh, you have you have the bar chart here you have the progress chart okay the green shows the progress made now what we have here is a line showing the day on which we are, the current day okay and what is shown in red here it could be something like cost how is the cost of the project varying with respect to time 
okay so we have uh, we will plot a graph like this okay to show you uh, how this happens we'll plot a graph like this and what is shown uh, what do you think the green line here is The no. estimated cost, actual yeah. cost. Yes, the red is the planned or the estimated cost. So it's it's the cash flow for the estimate, and the green is what is once a progress a project has started progressing, what is the actual cash flow? Typically, you would have the green above the red because mostly you'll have. You can have the green above the red, okay? But uh, it also depends. Uh, I mean, just. Let's just take this question. If the green is below the red, what could what are the two things it could mean? Maybe it's overestimated. Yes, it is overestimated, and I'm doing or below cost. Or going behind schedule. Yes, that is the other part. But it's going behind schedule. I've not complete. I've not completed enough uh, of my pro project progress. I've not spent the money. It could mean that. So it could be either. Yeah. Then B remains an uh, unfinished activity. Yes. So right now B should have been finished. It's not finished, so we are actually behind schedule. It could also be that it's uh, below the estimated. It could. It could not mean below, but it's right now when you look at the schedule, there are many activities which are should have been finished, which are not finished, right? Also, maybe the progress also wasn't good, hmm. but the cost, the expense was very high. Let's say there met a lot of overheads. So right now the question is, can you make a conclusion why this is below? You cannot make a conclusion. Okay, it could be either that, and but but when looking at the at the progress bars, what do you think? It could mostly that the work hasn't been completed. Work hasn't been completed. completed. Okay, so you have not spent money because work for that money has not been completed. So yes, you have spent less. So now when you you know once you get work, so when you look go to the end of the project, what is likely? Let's say project is fully completed. The green will be above the red. Okay, so these are scenarios that are possible, and when we get into monitoring, we'll get into much more details of this. Okay, and uh, so when we when we start, uh, just to just to summarize, when we when we want to draw a Gantt chart, these are the steps one would take. You will identify activities, you will identify milestones, identify expected time and sequence of tasks. You okay, can draw the horizontal uh, time axis. You'll write the activities and represent activities for specific time duration with bars or with milestones or whatever is required. Okay. Now, when we come into the last two, the last two are where you fill in the bars based on uh, as they are completed and keep track of progress.